Recently, you may have heard that Russia may be loosening restrictions on piracy in an effort to combat all the tech sanctions that have been placed on their citizens. This makes sense as basically every tech and media company you can think of has sanctioned Russia. So in order to continue being productive and get some entertainment, Russia basically has to turn to piracy. But something that you may not have expected though is that there are rumors and speculation floating around that Biden may not only loosen restrictions surrounding piracy, but he may legalize piracy altogether in America with an upcoming executive order. Ever since these rumors surfaced, pirates from around the world have rejoiced as this move could spark an international copyright revolution. In the meantime, production studios have been mortified as they struggle to understand how the billions they spent on lobbying failed to prevent this. So here's the reasoning behind why Biden may be introducing this legislation, the details about what it may include and its potential short and long-term repercussions. Starting with the reasoning for such a move, we have the deflation crisis. As you guys know, over the past year, deflation has gone through the roof. Now, this may be confusing at first given that CPI readings would suggest the exact opposite. For example, the most recent CPI reading suggested an inflation rate of 7.9%, which is the highest we've seen in four decades. Also, let's not forget that gas prices are literally $7 a gallon in some parts of the country. But as Jerome has been preaching from the start, this slight increase in prices is just transitory. So gas prices should stabilize at $6.50 any day now. In the meantime, the commodities of our era have been deflating faster than ever before. Take Apple for example. People often complain about how expensive Apple products have become as many of their products cost well over $1,000. They even sell a monitor stand for $1,000. But the thing that people forget to consider is that Apple has yet to raise prices on any of these products despite rampant inflation. $1,000 in 2019 is equivalent to $1,109 today. Yet Apple still only charges $1,000 for the stand. This means that the Pro Stand has dropped in price by roughly 10%. Now, 10% may not sound like much. But when you're talking about a $50,000 Mac Pro, you're actually getting a $5,000 discount. So as Kathy Wood was suggesting, the real fear is not inflation, but actually deflation. But what does deflation have to do with piracy? Well, during a deflation crisis, cash is king, and unfortunately, most millennials have no cash. This isn't all that surprising given that the average millennial would rather water their plans than handle finances. But it does pose a serious problem. As baby boomers retire and cut back on spending, millennials are becoming the workhorse of the economy. But given that most of them are broke, we'll see less capital flowing into Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, Floki Inu, and the leading NFTs. So Biden's potential executive order is simply attempting to curb this decline. If millennials no longer have to pay for their 17 media and entertainment subscriptions every month, they can actually save a substantial amount of money. Now, it's not like they're gonna save this for retirement. But proponents of this executive order are hoping that they turn around and spend this money on something more lucrative. You see, media companies aren't the most lucrative businesses. Disney, for example, hasn't been able to crack a 5% net margin since the pandemic started. Meanwhile, Starbucks has been holding strong at a 15% net margin, which is three times higher. So if millennials spend more money at Starbucks instead of paying for media, which is probably where they'll spend it, Corporate America can then turn around and invest this extra money into real assets such as stocks, real estate, bonds, and commodities like the Mac Pro, which will hopefully curb the impacts of the deflation crisis. Now that we've discussed the reasoning behind this potential executive order, let's delve into the meat of the legislation itself. The first rumors of such legislation surfaced from the official TFES Twitter account at 7.37 a.m. They tweeted, quote, Watch out for Biden's potential executive order 02496. Piracy may be legalized very soon. At first, people didn't really know what this meant, but soon enough, more and more tweets started to surface. Tony Stark, for example, tweeted, Haha, good thing I called it with Endgame years ago. Shortly after, Elon Musk tweeted, Does this mean no more Iron Man cameos? Meanwhile, Facebook tweeted, Too bad the movie industry didn't embrace the data collection model. All these cryptic tweets were still quite confusing to put together. But eventually, we saw a new Wikipedia page pop up that gave details into the executive order. 
The Wikipedia page describes the deflation threat that's looming over the United States and how Biden has little choice but to pass this executive order. If this executive order were to pass, piracy of all movies, games, software, and music would become perfectly legal within the United States. On top of this, all convicted pirates would be cleared of all charges and released from prison. Now, you may be wondering, if no one is paying for media, then no production company will want to produce any content, right? Well, that's what everyone thought at first, including Tony Stark. But fortunately, a powerful individual has stepped up to the plate. The executive order outlines that any and all production activities will be personally funded by Jerome's money printer. Jerome figured that with the deflation getting out of hand, printing some extra cash can't hurt. Also, production costs amongst even the biggest production studios are peanuts for Jerome. Disney, for example, was planning on spending just $33 billion on content in 2022. For Jerome, $33 billion is just a day of printing, if that. So, it doesn't look like production studios will run into any funding issues anytime soon. One thing to note though is that Jerome will only cover production costs and that he won't be paying for profits. So, these production studios don't have to figure out how to monetize their viewers to generate profits. But moving forward, they'll never have to worry about recouping production costs. It's just a matter of how much profits can they generate. With such a game-changing piece of legislation, there's no doubt that we'll see massive short-term and long-term repercussions. One of the first moves we've seen production companies take is initiating massive bidding wars for all of the most popular piracy sites. Now, if this legislation passes, Netflix, Disney, Hulu, and all the other popular streaming platforms will have download links to all of their content on their websites themselves. But it seems like a lot of people prefer to use the classic piracy sites over these offerings, hence the bidding war. Kickass Torrents, for example, was recently acquired by an undisclosed party for $32 billion. Meanwhile, the Pirate Bay has apparently received dozens of private offers with the highest offer clocking in at over $100 billion. This is quite ironic given that just a few hours ago, acquiring any one of these sites would have been unthinkable given the insane liabilities that each of them carries. Also, we should note that the executive order hasn't even been passed yet. So, these bidders are taking quite a risk by prematurely acquiring these sites, but I guess they can afford it. Given the size of the offer, I think it's likely that the offer is either from Netflix or Disney. But then again, it could just as easily be from Google or Facebook as well given that this is the perfect opportunity to capitalize on the trend towards piracy. While Artem Wallen, Kickass Torrents founder, quickly agreed to sell Kickass Torrents, the same cannot be said about the Pirate Bay's founders. For them, running the Pirate Bay is less about making money and more about principle. One of the Pirate Bay's co-founders, Frederick Nage, has literally said that spending time in prison was well worth it for the Pirate Bay. So, it's not surprising that they weren't enticed to sell out to big tech. Not to mention, they can likely make a lot more money if they simply went public, which seems to be the plan. Gottfried Swartham tweeted, Mark your calendars, the Pirate Bay may have an IPO on April 20th. If this actually does end up taking place, the Pirate Bay will evolve into being one of the largest companies in the world basically overnight. Also, given that the three co-founders currently own all the equity in the company, they'll each likely become multi-deca billionaires. So, the future is looking pretty bright for both production companies and piracy sites. But only time will tell who will become the biggest pirate. In terms of the response to this legislation, companies seem to be all over the place. Adobe, for example, tweeted, Eh, it's not like it makes a difference to us anyway. Meanwhile, Disney has promised a full-on press meeting to hash out their plan moving forward. If they're not able to acquire a large piracy site like a Pirate Bay, it's likely that Disney will shift to displaying ads and collecting data similar to Google and Facebook. They'll probably also continue to offer their movies in theater for a fee if people are still interested. As for the public, most pirates don't really care all that much. The biggest upside for them is that they no longer have to pay for a VPN. But then again, if Disney and Netflix start to collect data through piracy sites, it's probably best to use a VPN anyway. So, this doesn't really make a difference to most pirates. Meanwhile, we've seen a lot of piracy noobs navigating to rip off sites of the Pirate Bay, downloading various viruses, and falling for the stupidest of scams. It's probably best if these guys stick to paying for their media until companies come out with their own download portals. In terms of countrywide responses, Russia has perceived this as a challenge. After all, they were the first world power to loosen restrictions on piracy. So, it looks like Biden is copying Russia. 
In an effort to stay one step ahead of the US, it's speculated that Putin will announce that Russia will not only allow for the piracy of media, but also the piracy of intellectual property. In other words, all patents and trademarks will become void, meaning that anyone can copy, produce, and sell anything. Such a policy seems too woke to be adopted by the US right now. But if the US enters a piracy war with Russia, we may see similar policies surfacing very soon. But we'll just have to wait and see. Do you guys support this executive order? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you wish Jerome's money printer could subsidize your operations. And of course, consider checking out our international channels to watch our videos in other languages. And consider subscribing to see more questions illogically conspired. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.